Hi everyone, and welcome to ACT Math Help, where I'm going to be going through questions 31 through 40 on the ACT math test. Down below, you can find the link to these questions. I have a video that shows you how to get to the TestNav website. If you're taking the ACT online, you want to get familiar with this test site using the Desmos graphing calculator, playing with the bookmarks, marking questions, um, using the X out feature for problems that don't work. So practice this test first on your own, and then I'm here to help you with questions that you may have or Desmos hacks to help things go quickly for you so you can save time for the problems that are more challenging for you. I hope that this ACT video can help you get the ACT score that you want to get in the college that you want to go to. Question number 31. The vector i represents one mile per hour east, and the vector j represents one mile per hour north. Maria is jogging south at 12 miles per hour. One of the following vectors represents Maria's velocity in miles per hour. Which one? We are given that vector i represents one mile per hour east. And we use this to denote vector. And we are given that j represents one mile per hour north. And you can put ones here to represent that it's one. And in this one, we're curious about if she's jogging. In this problem, we're curious about Maria jogging south at 12 miles per hour. So we're going to look at this J vector and she's going south. So we're going to change this negative and then make it a 12. So we're going to go down here, negative because it's going south instead. And she's going 12 miles per hour instead of one. So this one is B, negative 12 J. Question number 32. Four identical glasses are shown below. One glass is empty and the other three glasses are one-fourth full, one-half full, and four-fifths full of water respectively. If the water is re redistributed equally among the four glasses, what fractional part of each glass would be filled? This is a great problem for Desmos. We could spend time finding common denominators but we're gonna to come to our calculator. And what we wanna do is we wanna add up the total amount of water. So let's do one fourth plus one half plus four fifths. That gives us 1.55. We're going to evenly distribute that among the four glasses. So we're gonna take 1.55 divided by four and this button right here will change it into a fraction that will match our answers. And so if I press that, I see that I get 31 over 80, which is option E. Question number 33. Aurelio was purchasing carpet tiles to cover an area of his living room floor that is eight and one third feet wide by 10 feet long. Each carpet tile is a square 20 inches wide by 20 inches long. What is the minimum number of carpet tiles that Aurelio must purchase to cover this area of his living room floor. So we have a rectangular floor here that is eight and one third feet wide by 10 feet long. And notice that these are in feet and these are in inches. Since the tiles he is buying are in inches, I'm going to change these feet into inches by multiplying each of these side lengths by 12. So 10 times 12 is 120 inches. And eight and one third, if we put this into our calculator, it's going to give us um, a repeating decimal. Uh, one divided by three is 0.3 repeating. I can end up with a nice number if I change this into an improper fraction. Three times eight is 24 plus one is 25. So I'm going to do 25 thirds. And then I'm going to multiply that by 12. 12 divided by three is four. And four times 25 is 100. But if I didn't know that, I could always just plug that right into my Desmos calculator. I can do 8 and 1 third times 12. To get the area of the living room floor, it's 100 times 120. And that is 12,000 inches squared. So now we need to figure out how many of these fit within here. So each tile is 20 by 20. So 20 times 20 which is 400 inches squared. 
So I'm going to divide this into this 12,000 number. And when I divide 12,000 divided by 400, I get 30. Question number 34. In the standard xy coordinate plane, a circle with its center at 8, 5, and a radius of 9 coordinate units has which of the following equations? The equation for a circle is the quantity x minus h squared plus the quantity y minus k squared equals the radius squared. The center has parameters h and k, and 9 is the radius, r. Let's plug those into this equation, x minus 8 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 9 squared. And 9 squared simplifies to 81, so I'm looking for this. And I can see that that's the first option, a. What if I don't remember this on the ACT? This is where Desmos can come to the rescue. I can come here and I can just start typing these equations in and seeing which one has a center at eight, five and a radius of nine. So maybe you just wanna start from the top and come down. So I have the quantity X minus eight squared plus quantity Y minus five squared equals 81. I just fit the viewing window nice so we could see this. But this looks like here that if I go over to eight, five, it looks like that's the center of the circle there. If I look at the radius portion, it goes from negative one to 17, and that's a distance of 18 for the diameter. So if I half that, I get nine. I can also use Desmos as a visual tool if I don't remember the equation for a circle. We are gonna use this prompt for the next four questions. Question number 35. Many humans carry the gene YQ77. The YQ test determines with 100% accuracy whether a human carries YQ77. If a YQ test result is positive, the human carries the YQ77 gene. If a YQ test result is negative, the human does not carry the YQ77. Sam designed a less expensive test for YQ77 called the SAM77 test. It produces some incorrect results. To determine the accuracy of SAM77 test, both tests were administered to 1,000 volunteers. The results from this administration are summarized in the table below. Question number 35 says it costs $2,500 to administer each YQ test and $50 to administer each SAM77 test. What is the total cost to administer both tests to all the volunteers? So we need to know the number of volunteers. We can find that right over here. There are a thousand volunteers. So it costs 2,500 for the YQ test. So I'm gonna multiply that by the 1,000 volunteers. And I need to add that to it cost $50 for the other test. So 50 times 1,000. I can multiply these two things together or come right up here to my Desmos calculator. Typing this in really quick. 2,500 times 1,000 plus 50 times 1,000 gives me the answer of 2,550,000. And that's answer E. Question number 36. What percent of the volunteers actually carry the YQ77? In this case, we're going to be looking at the positive YQ test column. We're gonna add these two numbers together. So we have 590 plus 25 over our total, which is the 1,000 volunteers. When I add these two numbers together, I get 615, and I forgot a zero there, and then over 1,000. That as a percentage is 61.5%. If we would just type that into a calculator, we can verify that. Question number 37. For how many of the volunteers did the SAM 77 test give an incorrect result? Let's recall that the YQ test determines with 100% accuracy. In this table, we are looking to see where the results for both of the tests match. We had a positive SAM 77 test and a positive YQ test. 
So this one checks out the 590. Where there are both negative, that will also check out. So right here with a negative YQ test and right here with a NAM and right here with a negative SAM 77 test. So what we are looking at are the places that it doesn't match, and that's here and here. So we're going to add 25 and 10 together. And that gets us 35. So there are 35 either false positives or false negatives. Question number 38, and our last question that uses this prompt. One of the volunteers whose SAM 77 test result was positive will be chosen at random to the nearest point 001. What is the probability the chosen volunteer does not possess YQ77? So in this case, we're doing a probability problem. So we want the number of favorable outcomes. over the total. In this case, our total is the positive results. So 590 plus 10 will get us that total. So that will be 600 on the bottom. And what is the probability that the volunteer does not possess the YQ77? Well, that's this 10 because this matched in the last problem, so we're gonna be using this 10 value. If we take this into a calculator, we get 0.016 repeating. So if we round up, because we'll have 66666, we get 0 0.017. Question number 39, given matrices X equals negative one zero and Y equals negative two, negative one, which of the following matrices is X, Y? This means that we're gonna multiply these two matrices together. To do this multiplication, we're going to take this first spot and multiply it by this top spot, negative one times negative two. We are going to add that to the second part here and the bottom part here, zero times negative one. Negative one times negative two is two, plus zero times negative one, which is zero, leaves me with an answer of two. Question number 40, regardless of how the graph is oriented in the standard XY coordinate plane, no graph in one of the following categories has a vertical line of symmetry, which one? So in this case, we're trying to find something that could fold onto itself evenly on both sides. And so we're trying to look for which graph will not have any of that symmetry. And if I look here at my choices and knowing what I know about a scalene triangle, a scaling triangle has three lengths that are not equivalent. That will never have a line of symmetry that allows the graph to fold onto itself perfectly. All of these other ones do. If we wanted to see the lines of symmetry for all of these, how they can fall onto them, well, a line, we can fold that on top of each other. A square has many lines of symmetry, right? I can fold in a half there, there, there there. Um, a pentagon, I'm assuming they mean a regular pentagon in here. So I can fold that across there. I can do it here. There's multiple places I can do this one as well. And then the parallelogram it will fall on top of itself on the diagonals. But we can jump right to the scaling triangle because we know that none of these have equal side lengths. I hope by watching these videos worked out on the online platform are helping you get the ACT score that you want. If you want more of this or you want to see some other fun things I'm doing, make sure to check out my channel at Math with Mel and subscribe.